what's up people welcome to the part 3 pharmacodynamics and uh, let's get started Okay, so what we saw till now in pharmacodynamics is uh, that what it is, uh, it is what body does, uh, what drug does to the body, right? So, so in this video, we are having uh, some terminologies. Uh, we are going to understand those, right? So the first one, the dose response relationship. Okay, so यानी कि dose का क्या relation है response के साथ? मतलब dose आप बढ़ाओगे कम करोगे तो उसे response में क्या difference आने वाला है, right? so it is having two components this uh, this relationship is having two components the dose plasma concentration and the plasma concentration response okay so uh, firstly that ki aap dose ko badhaoge ya kam karoge usse plasma concentration mein kya difference aane wala hai okay and secondly plasma concentration ko mein dose ko zyada kam hone se response mein kya difference aane wala hai okay so these two aspects uh, we are talking about okay in dose resp uh, dose response relationship okay now uh, the intensity of response is more with more uh, dose okay uh, so if you are increasing the dose uh, the response is going to be more right now uh, the dose response curve it is rectangular hyperbola so the figure is given here uh, as you can see ki jo dose uh, curve hai wo which is it is actually of what shape it is of rectangular hyperbola and uh, if you if you are looking at the log dose uh, uh, curve right so it is of sigmoid shape okay now the formula we are having uh, to measure the observed effect okay so uh, it is a formula that e is equal to e max into d divided by kd plus d so what is e here the observed effect d is the dosage of the drug e max is the maximal response which is going to be get, uh, produced okay and kd what it is a dissociation constant of drug receptor complex so we are having a complex right the drug receptor complex now uh, the dissociation constant associated with it is called kd now kd here is uh, similar to km which we saw earlier right now kd is equal to dose of drug at which half maximal response is produced if dose is plotted on log scale curve okay so basically kd is similar to km how uh, here we can see that the response dose uh, response versus dose curve is given in the figure so uh, what is kd it is equal to dose of drug at which half maximal response is produced okay yani ki uh, drug ki kis dose pe response jo hai wo half produce hone wala hai okay so <clears throat> so is figure mein clearly we can see that a kd how will be calculated a response ko 50% karke simultaneously will uh, measure the dose that how much dose is corresponding to the half uh, when half response is produced right Uh, then we uh, saw that it is sigmoid. Uh, the log dose is sigmoid curve, and the do uh, normal dose is uh, rectangular hyperbola. Okay, so that is what dose response relationship is. Okay, now uh, <clears throat> next slide we are having the next terminology we are having is drug potency and efficacy. Now what do you mean by potency and what is efficacy? Okay. so a drug potency it is the amount of drug needed to produce a certain response okay so a kitni drug chahiye hame kuch particular response produce karne ke liye so the drug which is producing more response in less dose it is more potent okay so maine uh, koi particular drug kam dose mein di fir bhi uska particular response aa raha hai as compared to dusri drug jisko mere ko zyada dose dena pad raha hai right so the pehli drug hai jo kam dose dena pad raha hai jiska it is more potent for example if you look at the figure uh, if we compare <clears throat> a and b okay if we compare a with b uh, there are four drugs given right a b c d uh, so if we compare a b uh, we know that uh, with when a is given in less dose 
then also it is producing the optimum optimum response okay so a and b they are both producing the same response but a is requ required in less amount less dosage is required and uh, b is uh, required in more amount so who uh, who is going to be more potent obviously it is a a is more potent than b similarly uh, d d is more potent than c both are producing same response still d is required in less amount less dosage of d is required than c okay now the second term drug efficacy what it is so it refers to the maximal response that can be elicited by the drug okay so <clears throat> Similarly, if you look at the uh, graph, right, uh, if we compare A with D, right, so uh, which one, which drug is giving more response, which is giving maximal response, A is giving, right, so A is more efficacious than D, so uh, you got it, right, what is drug efficacy, it is a maximal response that can be produced by the drug, so D is not producing its maximum, right, A is producing its maximum response, so that is why it is more a is more efficacious similarly b is more efficacious than c okay now higher the response higher is the efficacy we saw this for example aspirin is less potent as well as less efficacious analgesic than morphine so we all know that morphine is a very 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 uh, highly uh, uh, good analgesic right aspirin is less potent that means it is obviously required in <clears throat> more amount it is required right and it is uh, going to be less efficacious also because it is not going to produce that much higher response that morphine is going to produce. Okay, so that is what drug potency and efficacy is. Now, another term uh, we are seeing here is drug selectivity. Now, what is drug selectivity? So, uh, again, this is uh, this we are going to understand again by a graph. Firstly, uh, we'll read uh, what is written, right? extent of separation of drc what is drc dose response curve so the extent of separation of dose response curve of a drug for different effects is a measure of its selectivity okay so <clears throat> first you see the graph the <clears throat> first one right uh, no the second one the second graph we are having response versus log dose okay so four drugs a b c d four drugs are given here so <clears throat> so what what is written here that the selectivity is a measure of the separation of these drcs so we are having four uh, curves right uh, which is dose response curve we are having right drcs so in dose response curves ke beech mein jo separation hai, right jo gap hai, that is going to <clears throat> be the measure of uh, drug selectivity okay so uh, for example we are having a and d a and d drugs uh, a and d curves are of one drug and b and c curves are of another drug okay so a and d cur curves are denoting for salbutamol and b and c denotes for isoprenaline now uh, what is the fact that salbutamol more is a uh, salbutamol is more selective bronchodilator then isoprenaline okay so how are we saying this a and d denotes salbutamol and b and c denotes isoprenaline so as you can see ki a and d are more far apart okay so a or d jo hai wo dur zyada hai as compared to b or c jo ki pass pass right so a and d kyunki dur hai uh, which is uh, you know uh, denoting for salbutamol drug so basically a is denoting bronchodilation and D is denoting for cardiac stimulation, right? So, <clears throat> if you see for salbutamol, A and D are far apart. So, basically, come dosage pe jo A, mainly A uh, curve we are getting, right? Come dosage uh, of salbutamol. So, A curve we are getting, uh, which basically, what it means that, uh, is that uh, salbutamol is more selective bronchodilator right then the isoprenaline Q because isoprenaline ke curves pass pass mein. so it is uh, like having same curve same kind of curve for both uh, bronchodilation as well as cardiac stimulant but salbutamol is not having uh, same curve for both right so it is more uh, acting uh, it is more acting selectively like an uh, vasodilator right so that is what this curve 
denotes right you got it i think so <clears throat> so basically drugs uh so we are going uh <clears throat> farther than this that uh, drugs rarely produce just one action okay so obviously we know that uh, drugs we are having many side effects and all and uh, drug do not basically produce just one action right so the gap between therapeutic index and the adverse effect uh it defines the safety margin or the therapeutic index now very very important term here is therapeutic index now uh what it is what is a safety margin of a drug or what is therapeutic index of the drug and how is it useful useful why are we defining this because uh it is denoted by the gap between the therapeutic index and the adverse effect okay so uh this is basically the gap between therapeutic index matlab <clears throat> जो बेसिकली जो ड्रग एक्शन होने वाला है द एक्शन फॉर विच वी रिक्वायर ड्रग एंड द एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स विच इंक्लूड द साइड इफेक्ट्स एंड ऑल राइट सो दीज आर द इफेक्ट्स विच वी डू नॉट वॉन्ट एंड थेरापटिक इंडेक्स इज द इफेक्ट्स विच वी वॉन्ट सो सेफ्टी मार्जिन लाइज इन बिटवीन दीज टू ओके सो द फॉर्मूला वी आर हैविंग फॉर थेरापटिक इंडेक्स इज मीडियन लीथल डोज डिनोटेड बाई एल डी फिफ्टी divided by median effective dose so we are having average of uh, lethal dose and have average of effective dose okay and that is how uh, the formula of therapeutic index is derived now uh, the therapeutic range it is a dose range bounded by dose which produces minimal therapeutic effect to maximal ex uh, maximum acceptable adverse effect so and so now look at this graph the first one right so we are having two curves here right therapeutic effect and the adverse effect now uh, what is therapeutic range so this is basically the gap between minimum therapeutic effect okay so minimum therapeutic effect uh, ye hum de uh, derive kar rahe hain therapeutic effect wale curve se ki minimum kya effect ho sakta hai right and we are having the maximum acceptable adverse effect from the adverse effect curve okay और इन दोनों के बीच का जो डिफरेंस है दैट इज कॉल्ड एज थेरापटिक रेंज ओके सो दिस इज डिराइव फ्रॉम इफेक्ट वर्सेज लॉग डोज डोजेज ओके नाउ दिस इज वॉट वी लर्न अबाउट वॉट इज थेरापटिक इंडेक्स एंड वॉट इज थेरापटिक रेंज नाउ क्लिनिकली इफेक्टिव डोज ऑफ अ ड्रग फॉर वन पेशेंट मे बी टॉक्सिक फॉर दी अदर ओके सो दिस इज वॉट वी थेरापटिक इंडेक्स एंड ऑल दीज दीज आर ऑल थियरिटिकल टर्मिनोलॉजीज राइट so when we uh, give drug clinically okay so we are uh, practically if we see that uh, जब हम किसी एक patient को कोई dosage देते हैं तो may be उसके लिए वो uh, सही तरीके से काम करे without producing any side effects and all but uh, it can be toxic to the other patient so this uh, these all things depend on various uh, factors right so um, <clears throat> clinically uh, तो things are a little different okay so another ratio used to estimate harm is a risk is to benefit ratio so every uh, drug is having a ratio called risk, uh, risk is to benefit uh, why we are uh, seeing this ratio is uh, because uh, just to see whether the uh, benefits are the benefits should be more than the risk factors right so that is why we give uh, drug right uh, to so that the benefits are more okay and uh, more than the uh, side effects or the risk factors now uh, the next uh, the next terminology we are having is a uh, combined effect of drugs now uh, when two or more drugs are combined right now what happens what can happen right so two things can happen synergism and the antagonism so in synergism what happens is the combined effect is going to be the simply the addition of the individual drugs right so effect of drug a plus b is going to be equal to effect of drug a plus effect of drug b uh, now this is uh, this is what happens in the additive type right so in synergism we are having again two types additive and supra additive okay so in additive type what we saw is simply the addition now uh, the example we are having of this is aspirin and paracetamol these are both combined to give analgesic and the antipyretic effect okay so both of these uh, the effect of both of these drugs are going to get combined and going to get added up right 
now the second one supra additive and the potentiation okay so supra additive is also called potentiation and what happens here is the combined effect is going to be more than the individual effects right uh, so here interesting thing is that one component given alone produces no effect okay so if you're giving just a drug a or just drug b they are not going to produce any effect but when they are present together they even increase the effect produced by the individual drugs okay now <clears throat> the second uh, thing which can happen when the drugs combine are antagonism it is uh, where the combined drug effect is less than the individual effects okay so when the drug combines they are going to diminish each other's activity so i hope you got this right uh, what is combined drug effect now we're going to elaborate and see the various types of antagonism okay so the first one physical antagonism so uh, what is it uh, basically physical uh, जो प्रॉपर्टीज़ है ड्रग की उसके बेसिस पे जो एंटागोनिज्म होता है राइट दैट इज़ कॉल्ड फिजिकल एंटागोनिज्म फॉर एग्जांपल चारकोल इट एड्सॉर्ब एल्कोलॉइड्स एंड इट प्रिवेंट देयर एब्जॉर्बशन सो व्हेन चारकोल इज गिवन अलोंग विद एल्कोलॉइड्स राइट सो दे बोथ इंटरैक्ट विच विथ ईच अदर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर फिजिकल स्टेट फॉर एग्जाम्पल चारकोल इट इज़ गोइंग टू एब्जॉर्ब द एल्कोलॉइड ओके सो दैट इज़ वाई एल्कोलॉइड कैन नॉट गेट एब्जॉर्ब राइट and uh, the chemical antagonism what happens here is two drugs they react chemically and they form inactive product okay so these uh, both of these drugs they should not be given together right otherwise they would be uh, of no use right now the example for this is going to be chelating agents which are used in poisonings right if someone has eaten poison so how are you uh, how are we going to uh, stop its effect right so uh, we are going to give chelating agents to uh, to the patient now a physiological or functional antagonism so what happens here is uh, two drugs they cause opposite effect on the same physiological function for example we are having is glucon uh, glucagon and the insulin okay so uh, two drugs we are having and they produce a uh, opposite effects on the same function okay so one is increasing it and other is decreasing it right we got it right then a uh, receptor antagonist antagonist blocks receptor of agonist so we know this uh, we already studied receptor in much much detail in the previous uh, parts of this uh, this chapter so a uh, receptor we know that what happens is antagonist it blocks the receptor of agonist okay now example we are having is anticholinergic drugs which uh, act opposite to the cholinergic agonist okay now uh, the various uh, types we are having of this antagonism is competitive non competitive uh, okay so both of these are acting under equilibrium okay in equilibrium and then the second uh, type main type is we are having non equilibrium kind okay so the first one competitive we know that it uh, the drug is going to bind to uh, the catalytic site right and in non competitive we know that antagonist is going to bind to the allosteric site what is allosteric site the uh, any site which is not the catalytic site right and a uh, non equilibrium <coughs> so okay uh, then we are uh, delete this line okay it is repeated once again and non equilibrium what happens here is antagonist binds to receptor with strong irreversible bonds okay so here antagonist antagonist binds to the receptor with strong irreversible so a uh, why equilibrium is not maintained here so once uh, the antagonist uh, binds to the receptor it does not get removed because uh, there is very very strong bond between the antagonist and the receptor okay so that's it guys uh, that's all for this video uh, for a quick recap we saw some terminologies here including uh, dose response relationship right and the drug potency and efficacy then we saw what is drug selectivity and therapeutic index uh, therapeutic um, uh, safety margin therapeutic effect okay so uh, all this we saw therapeutic range sorry and uh, we we saw these graphs and all and we saw what happens when the drugs are combined uh synergism antagonism okay so we uh, saw this and i hope you got this uh, so that's it uh, keep studying uh, watch my other videos
and uh, yeah okay bye bye